Welcome everyone to the second talk today. Uh, this is going to be by Hai Hao Lu. Um, Hai Hao, after finishing his PhD at MIT, spent a year with us at Google Research, uh, working both with the ads optimization team and uh, the large scale optimization team doing some really exciting work on solving like uh, huge uh, distributed LP solvers. And uh, after that, he went to the Chicago Booth School of Business where he's a faculty member. And today is going to talk about direct follow-up work uh, to what Nikhil spoke now, uh, the differences and extensions and some other exciting connections. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for the introduction and invitation. So I'm gonna follow uh, Nikhil's talk. So here, I just want to mention like, uh, I mean, I talk about like online allocation problem, but it's like sort of like equivalent to like the stochastic concept of optimization or like there are also a few other names like online linear programming, et cetera. These are sort of like similar things. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about, like, talk about some, like, some of the new results, like in particular efficiency, non stationarity and the robustness. These are also kind of like answered some of the questions in the end, hopefully. Uh, okay, so the talk is essentially based on the first paper here. I'll also quickly mention the next two papers. Okay, in this online allocation problem with resource constraint, so these are like problems that are, appear a lot in CS and OR. In these problems, we have a fixed amount of resource and the request gonna arrive repeatedly over time. For each request, we need to make a real-time action. This action gonna generate a revenue and consume some resource. Our goal here is trying to uh, design an algorithm that can maximize the total revenue subject to the resource constraint. The challenge for this problem is that like, it's an online problem. When we make the decision right now, we do not know about the information for future. Okay, so we kind of like need to design some like data-driven algorithms. So more specifically, here is our model. So we assume we have M types of resources. Each resource has a capacity BG. Okay. And then we also, we, we're gonna have like a finite horizon online uh, process with capital T time periods. At each time, you're gonna receive a request. This request contains like three pieces of information, a reward function FT, a consumption function BT, and a action space capital XT. So what the decision maker uh, need to choose an action small XT from this action space. And then this action gonna uh, generate a reward FDXT and also consume resource BTXT. Okay. So here, what we are going to do is like we, are, we are targeting as like an online algorithm. So by online algorithm, what I mean is like when you make the decision, you only make the decision based on the observed history. So here we also uh, assume we do know the total capacity B. So B is a capital B is a vector. You can have like a multiple resource. And you also know the horizon of the problem, this capital T. So in practice, um, this T, capital T, I mean, you always know B, you know your budget, but you, sometimes you do not know the uh, capital T, how many requests you're gonna receive. And like, I'm gonna talk about it, uh, how to relax uh, this, uh, knowing this uh, value T in the end. And for now, I can assume you do know the horizon T. And also another thing is that like we need to make sure that the resource constraints are always satisfied. I mean, these are hard constraints. You can, I mean, these are, uh, you cannot like violate your constraint. Suppose you know all of the information, then you can, uh, com you can like, formulate this like offline problem. Okay, so your decision is XT. You are trying to maximize the total reward subject to your budget constraint. Okay, and so here, one thing I also want to mention is that like this offline problem have like more information because it tells you the future information. So the offline optimal always provides like an upper bound for the uh, re any uh, reward, like the reward, like any al online algorithm can achieve. So in other words, this like OPT just like provide an upper bound on any online algorithm. So feel free to interrupt me whenever you want, just uh, want to make sure uh, I mean, it's also like, uh, yeah, I want it to be like a tutorial type of a talk. So let me know if uh, I lost you. Yeah, 
Uh, that's a great question. So here, like both F T and B T are like uh, it can be like some come from like a random process. And here we assume we know like the expected reward like consumption. And there, then here, what happens is like when capital T is large, so whether it satisfies the expectation or uh, hard constraint doesn't matter too much. So I mean, you can think either way. Yeah, okay. Great. Um, there are lots of applications for this online allocation problem uh, from like network revenue management in like hotel airline pricing, like online linear programming, online matching, proportional matching, assortment problem, uh, like joint allocation pricing, etc. So what really motivated me to work on this problem is this like bidding in repeated auction is part of constraint. So here I just want to. Uh, for those of you like who are not familiar with this problem, just want to give you like a short background about this problem. Uh, here I use like a display ads as an uh, example. This also happens in like in search ads or other online advertising environment. So in online advertising, like a big portion is gonna be like a real-time bidding. So by real-time bidding, what I mean is that like when a user opens a web page, for example, like cnn.com, there may be like a multiple ads showing up. So how these ads are selected? They are selected by an auction. Okay, so they're gonna be like a third party called exchange, which hosts this auction. And an exchange is gonna invite the buyers to bid for this impression. And the, the like the business like Nike, et cetera, they won't bid by themselves. They're gonna hire another third party called the demand side platform to help them bid. And then there are like different like uh, auction mechanisms. So a popular one, maybe second price auction. So nowadays, maybe more um, platform utilize first order, first price auction, but like there is a mechanism. And then usually the highest bidder gonna win the ad slot. And then the highest bidder gonna uh, win the ad slot paying their price. So the problem I'm facing is more from the demand side platform, like how much to bid for each impression. Okay, so more formally here is the problem. So we have like the total budget, you can think like the total budget for an advertiser for a week or for a month is capital B. So you're gonna be capital T incoming impression. And here we can, we can we assume that T is known, but you can think like you use historical data to learn this T for now. And then um, in each time period, we're gonna receive an impression. You're gonna learn the value of this impression. This is VT, you need to bid you need to bid uh, uh, your price that is XT, that is your decision. So after bidding it, if you win, you're gonna pay the, um, like uh, this DT. In second price auction, this DT gonna be the high speed from your competitor. So your paying value is like this DT. Uh, the offline problem is this one here. So you are trying to maximize the surplus. VT is your bidding price, DT is the value of the impression, uh, the, the paying price. Okay, and then this indicator function like measures whether you win the ad slot or not. Here for this problem, our FT is this uh, is the objective here, and the BT is the consumption. Okay, how much you you spend? So we want to, we want to like bid in the repeated auction to maximize the total reward subject to the budget constraint. It's the same problem like Nick here introduced just now. Okay, so here why this problem is hard. One reason this problem is hard is because you really need to the, you really need the algorithm to be efficient. It needs to, to be finished within 100 milliseconds. So therefore, like you cannot solve like a large LP, you cannot use like a dynamic programming to solve this problem. So furthermore, in practice, the sample are like not like IID. So they are always like seasonality or non seasonality uh, of the pro in the problem. Furthermore, so this VT and DT. You may not know the exact value. They come from like a machine learning model, and from a machine learning model means like you, you may have like noise or errors in this estimation. Um, even worse, sometimes um, it happens a lot in practice that it's like your your adversary gonna try to corrupt your data. They may try to uh, let you spend your money too early so that they can earn more value in the future. So there may be like corrupted data in the uh, in the in this like uh, in, in the like uh, the process, so this are like what we are really trying to deal with. This is like online bidding problem. 
Okay, so now I would like to highlight what are the difference between like this work I'm going to talk about and also the previous talk Nick Hill gave. So there are a few major difference. The first one is this like a best of many words. So we're going to provide like a single algorithm that can work not only for the stochastic ID case, but also achieve like optimal performance in other set input settings, including like adversarial, like a few like non-stationary setting. Another thing is that like with the efficiency. So in the Nick, Nick Hill's talk, like they still kind of like need to solve a LP once trying to estimate the OPT. And in particular, in, in practice, if you do not have a good estimation of the OPT, maybe the regret is going to be proportional to the estimation error, like in like a multiplicative sense. And here in our uh, algorithm, we do not need to solve the LP even once, and we do not need to know, for example, the bit to budget ratio in our algorithm. So these are, this that doesn't show up in the algorithm. And furthermore, also the last thing is like I want to talk about is like this connection to PI controller. Um, in practice, this uh, bidding auction, you, um, like a pop very popular algorithm is like a PI controller. So I cannot like try to build the connection between PI controller and the mirror descent. Then we are able to analyze the performance of the PI controller as well. Okay, these are a few major difference compared to the previous talk. Okay, so any questions so far, by the way? Okay, so here is what we want to do. We want to design an algorithm that is efficient, that can handle like uh, multiple non-stationary setting. It's kind of, it should be like robust to the noise of the estimation. It also need to be simple because otherwise engineer gonna complain a lot. And finally, uh, we want it to have like theoretical guarantee. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna dive into is the input models. That means like how these requests are drawn like how we get this like request FTPTXT. So one model is the stochastic ID model. That is like what is uh, Nick here talked in the last talk. And there, this request, they come from the same distribution, but it's not unknown to us. We're gonna learn this distribution over time. So another extreme is the adversarial case, which means you can, the, the request can be arbitrarily bad. It's given by our adversary. And these are actually two extreme, like one is ID, one is like arbitrary. In practice, what, ha what happens is like, it's neither stochastic ID nor adversarial. It's something in between, okay? It's maybe like adversarial uh, corruption with ID. Uh, and I can also talk about like two other input models like a markup process and a periodic model. These are like three, uh, non stationary model like in between of these two settings. Okay, so there are like a huge body of literature. I have three slides for the related literature, but it's only covered actually a small portion of the existing literature. Here, I, there are a few things I want to highlight. So the first like, um, for the stochastic ID case, um, so the like a one minus epsilon uh, approximation probably really started by the paper by uh, Devon Noah and Harris, like in 2009. And then there are lots of work along this line. Also, there are many work are done like by people here, like Balu, Shipra, Nick Hill, and uh, Klemberg. They are all like done like wonderful work on these type of problems. So in particular, this, this is the work like uh, Dick, uh, Nick Hill like talked about just now. And like, you, as you can see later on, there are lots of like similarities between uh, the algorithm of our, our algorithm and their algorithm. But like the difference is essentially like we are more flexible and it's like kind of like an extension of the previous work. In the adversarial case, um, there are also quite a lot of work, uh, but many of them are on like specific problems like network revenue management and other words. What I want to highlight here is that like, for well, this like AdWords problem, indeed there is a previous work showing that like no algorithm can achieve um, both vanishing regret for the stochastic ID case and it's constant competitive ratio for uh, adversarial case. So, so later on, I'm gonna talk about like our results. We're gonna get like the our results, our algorithm gonna get like vanishing regret and also competitive ratio. 
for the adversarial case. So that, but that doesn't violate this, uh, these results because like our competitive ratio are gonna be data dependent. I just want to mention this uh, upfront. So for the non-stationary setting, so there are not that too many works, but like, there are a few uh, works talking about like a different type of like non-stationarity, maybe like a Gaussian process. So suppose you have like a, some forecast, you may, you can do something clever, or they are like a uh, resistant like based non-stationarity. Okay. So any questions so far? And the next thing I'm gonna do is like to dive into the algorithm. So here is our offline problem. We are maximizing the total revenue subject to the budget constraint. It's a constraint optimization problem. So in constraint optimization, a very powerful tool is like Lagrangian duality. So here, what we did is like we introduced the Lagrangian dual variable mu to this to uh, to relax the constraint. Here is the dual function. So a key observation here is that for the dual objective function, the decision gonna be decomposed across time. What I mean by that is like in the original problem, the decision, you need to make the decision, I mean the, the decision are correlated because of the constraint, okay? But here, if you look at the dual problem, now you are able to exchange the order between the max and the summation. Now, if you look at this maximization problem, the maximization of decision variable is only xt. It's not like all of the xt, it's only one single xt. It's like a decomposed over time, okay? Another thing is this here, this part here. So inside this maximization problem, this is what we call like a weight adjust reward. So ft is your reward, mu, mu is the dual variable, you can think that it's like the opportunity cost, and bt is your consumption. If you use the resource right now, you're gonna lose the opportunity to use them in the future. Okay, so that's why you kind of like want to uh, maximize the weight adjust reward rather than the reward itself. So this understanding gives you a natural algorithm. Okay, so suppose you do know the optimal dual variable, you know the opportunity cost. Then what you can do is just to make your decision by solving this weight adjust, um, like uh, weight adjust reward maximization problem. Okay, this, this is similar to Nick Hill's um, previous talk in this like, as was problem, this mu is like kind of like alpha. And then another thing is like how you are able to calculate uh, this mu. So a key observation here is that, so here is a due function as time t. And indeed this primal action xt tells you a way to calculate a subgradient of the due function. The subgradient sub gt is essentially this b over t minus bt xt. The so this GT is the gap between the target consumption, B over T is the target consumption. And BT here is the true consumption. BTXT is the true consumption. The subgradient is essentially the gap between the target consumption and the true consumption. Now we are able to utilize like any online commerce optimization algorithm trying to update the dual variable, okay? So more formally here is our algorithm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. So, okay, it depends on the assumption. In the, in the, uh, if, if there is no assumption on F and B, then the best you can get is square T because you can only stop, I mean, the resource, even in no new star, that's, you're gonna uh, spend all your resources like at T minus order square T. Then like you're gonna eat, you're gonna deplete your uh, resource like square t times earlier. That's why like, you can only get square t regress. But if there is are more uh, assumptions, for example, uh, if the dual function is like strongly convex, and you are allowed to solve like the uh, offline problem like multiple times, then you are able to achieve like a log t regress. Um, okay, yeah. So here in, in my setting, yeah, in my setting, yeah, we want like B to be scaled with T. Yeah. So that means like, yeah, you have always have like a large body. Yeah. Capital B is T rule. Yeah. You cannot be, yeah. yeah. So we look at the asymptotic case and then capital B is like proportional to T. If we know the constant then. Um, 
you know, constant bound. Do you, do you know B divided by T, what that is equal to? Uh, yeah, we know both B and T, so we know B. Great. Any other question? Okay, so here is our algorithm. Okay, so we, when we receive a request, we're going to determine the action by solving this like with adjust revenue maximization problem. And so I just want to mention like sometimes solving this problem will not be always easy, in particular when this f and b are non-convex. And then we're going to update the dual variable, we're going to update the remaining resources and update the dual variable. So here I use a mirror descent. So this part here is a subgradient b over t minus bdxt. So here it's like, it should be a function. And this part here, the last part is the Bradman divergence. It's just a mirror descent, okay? So furthermore, uh, if we choose this edge to be one over two norm square, then we recover the online gradient descent algorithm, just like online gradient descent, and they project it to positive authent. If you choose H to be a negative entropy, then you're gonna recover the multiplicative weight update. So here is the algorithm. Okay. So the intuition here is that like, so B is your total budget, T is the, the time, P over, B over T is your target consumption, BTXT is your real consumption. So if you, if you consume like more resources than the target, then the dual variable gonna get higher and later on it's gonna be more conservative in, your, in consuming the resource. Okay. Okay, so next thing I'm gonna uh, dive into is a theoretical guarantee, but before then, like any questions so far? Okay, so I'm gonna introduce like a few like notation or assumptions. Okay, so here we're gonna assume there is an upper bound on F, an upper bound on the consumption as well. And also we're gonna assume there is a void action. Where void action is zero, zero is always in the constraint set, like F zero equal to zero, B zero equal to zero. And also B and F are non-negative, it's upper bounded by this F bar and B bar. So furthermore, we're gonna assume I mean, we don't need to assume like this with adjust reward function, you, you can get computer optimal solution, but we do need to assume there exists an uh, optimal solution. Okay, so recall like we have a five uh, input model. The next thing I'm gonna do is to go through the re re theoretical results for each of these five models. We have the stochastic ID, adversarial, adversarial corruption, uh, the Markov process and the periodic setting, okay? Okay, to talk about uh, the performance of the algorithm, uh, I'll need to talk about the, how to measure the, the, the performance and also the benchmark. But, but I believe that here in this audience, like uh, you are very familiar with this context. Okay, so uh, one thing is, is like cumulative reward. It's a total reward, like a, the algorithm can collect. It's a sum of F, FT, XT. And here we also need to make sure that this algorithm, the DC, this XT is given by the algorithm and this, this uh, decision won't exceed the budget constraint. And the benchmark we compare with is the offline optimal. Okay, so this gamma, gamma uh, like this arrow, that means like the, the all of the request. So given all of the request, then we, we can construct this like offline problem. And we let this OPT to be the optimal offline. So the regret of the algorithm is defined as a gap between the OPT and the uh, reward collected by the algorithm. We can also talk about the competitive ratio for some of the input model. And here is how we define the competitive ratio. So here this is essentially means OPT is alpha times the reward we collect. So alpha gonna be a value larger than that. So furthermore, one thing I want to highlight is that we look at this like asymptotic competitive ratio which means we look at the case when this number of sample goes to infinity. Okay, if you have finite samples, then you probably won't be able to achieve this regret, uh, this competitive ratio, but like we look at the case when T is go to infinity. Okay, so here is a result for the uh, stochastic ID case, um, which is kind of like, it can be reduced to an instance like Nikhil talked about just now. So we can show that the regret bound of the algorithm is like order square of T. But the major difference here is that we do not need to know OPT beforehand. And in other words, we do not, we do not need to solve uh, any large optimization problem even once. 
So this bound also uh, matches the uh, minimax uh, regret bound for this type of problem. So any question about this so far? Mm -hmm. uh, you get some kind of like instance-dependent regret bound that depends on the structure of your function. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, uh, for the stochastic ID, uh, I'm not so sure, but for adversarial, yes, you can. So for stochastic ID, because like, I mean, the vanishing regret is like already very good. So, I mean, there's not too much need to utilize the structure of like the consumption and the reward. But for adversarial, there are, of course, yeah, there are definitely something you can do better. Right. So you mentioned you can get like log t regret in some cases? Mm -hmm. uh, the log t regret is not this algorithm. It's like a different algorithm where you need to solve the offline problem like multiple times. Since there is a, I mean, also like under more assumption, there is a recent paper by Ying Yu uh, and his students who, which talks about this. Can this algorithm get log t regret? No, unfortunately, this algorithm itself doesn't because of like you use use up your all of your like resource like. Early, like t minus like t time, then like, you are not able to um, uh, like gather like more reward from here from this algorithm. <laughs> so you mean you cannot get the log t over the uh, over the uh, Okay, so what that means like okay, so you have this uh, online algorithm, right? So for this for this algorithm, even though you know like new stuff. So the best you can do is like you, you're gonna, the resource is gonna be used up at this time, t minus order small t. That means like you cannot collect the reward from the last square of t uh, sample. And that means like the best regret you can get is like order, the best you can get is order square of t. So for the, if you know, if you have, if you are able to resolve the problem like multiple times, I mean, so what you can do is like, you can better balance the uh, remaining budget. And there you are able to achieve like, yeah, you can achieve like log, log T regret because like, you can like better balance the budget. Yeah, but there, there you need to like know more information, you need to like resolve the problem along the path. Mm -hmm. So what are the extra structure assumptions that allow you to get or someone to get log T regret? So one structure is like due due function. I mean, it's not our work, but it's like sure, yeah, yeah. work. I think like one key assumption is like the due function need to be strongly convex. Okay. And that means like uh, maybe okay. So that means like this yeah this FT this request they cannot like come from like they must come from like a continuous distribution first. Yeah, and then you have this due due objective. Here is the due objective. You want to make sure that like this this function here is strongly convex, uh, which can be satisfied under like us under certain assumptions. Right. But like, you do need this this term to be strongly convex. Essentially, this term here to be strongly convex. This function piecewise linear. So yeah, for our case, it's piecewise linear because if you have like fun, okay. Um, Okay, so here essentially you need to take the expectation. Yeah, if you take the expectation, if F and B they are not, they can come from like this continuous distribution, it can be, yeah, yeah. And here is piecewise linear. Yeah. I think this might have some relationship with these guarantees for back pressure algorithms and queuing. Maybe there's some connection. So maybe we can discuss that more offline. Yeah. Uh, so do you have a sense why Shipra and Nikhil needed to compute opt and now you don't like, you think that even in their setting, you, they don't need to compute opt? Yeah, so that is something like we discussed quite a bit like just day after day. Yeah, so I mean, there like um, this, um, the idea is like you need to balance the, um, the primal, the, the reward and the consumption. You need OPT trying to, uh, try to make a ratio between these two values. So that they have the same units, and for then like what happens like the dual variable can be guaranteed to stay in a bound to a, like standard syntax. Like the unit is one, the dual variable is always unit is always one. So for us, like we are able to avoid that because okay, so now we we allow the dual variable to go 
in the whole space. It doesn't need to be stay in a unit uh, form. And then because of the dual variable can go the whole space, like I mean you have like more freedom. But that's roughly like why we don't need to know OPT. Is the algorithm same as that or uh, uh, the algorithm so itself different? The algorithm is very similar. It's the still it's almost the same. The only difference is like whether you constrain your dual variable in this like standard simplex or or like you let it to be in the policy also. Algorithm is slightly different because you don't know the object, right? So it, it, consume, it, it, it has to be because yeah. they consume it. So the algorithm. Yeah. Yeah. If you needed multiplicative guarantee, would you need to know? Uh, if you want multiplicative. So because like other 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 sort of cases are like kind of like a multiplicative uh, result. Instead of square root t, if you want it. Oh, yeah. Then, yeah, I'm not sure. I think like that is something that I'm also sure. Probably, I think that, that in that case, if you want to get that, maybe you need like you need to know of oh, yes. yeah. In our case, like we can like care about the real right. Um, yeah. Make sense? So, yeah. By the way, I mean, whenever we actually implement this algorithm, we never constrain it. We just do the important itself. Okay. It works well, you know. We did it to show guarantee. We found that it shows similar guarantees. Yeah. In fact, you know, beyond that, it's really the same. Yeah. 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 In this setting, like, yeah, it's essentially whether you know or not, it's a major difference, I would say. Yeah. And like, yeah, in fact, it's maybe because, like, Sometimes if you have a bad estimation of OPT, the performance of the algorithm that depends on the how good the estimation is, because the OPT can appear in the algorithm. Uh, and like for us, like OPT doesn't appear, so which means in that sense it's like maybe it had like slightly better slightly for performance. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I mean, even when, the uh, yeah, in practice we don't use it. Yeah. I mean these bad pressure algorithms don't compute off the user either, and there are proofs for the great guarantee for those algorithms. That might be even closer to what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, here, I also want to mention that, like, in some cases, in some cases like, you, you are not able to solve this with a just reward maximization problem exactly. For example, when you this F and B, they are come from a computer learning model. I mean, these are just an like estimation, or like when they are non-convex, and then you may be able to solve it like inexactly. There may be some error here for some of this sub problem, and the good part is like this error gonna be additive. Okay, that's the best you can hope. Like in the regret bound, it's additive. That means like if you if you have like a, maybe a good solution, like maybe like one minus one over e approximation for solving this problem, then you get like a one minus one over e competitive ratio for uh, the whole problem as well. I mean, it's robust to the errors. Okay, so that's the stochastic case. I mean, this the argument holds for all of the input model. And for the adversarial case, here is our major results. So we can show like OPT is like alpha times the uh, reward we, the algorithm can get. And this alpha value is this one here. Okay, so it looks complicated, but essentially this alpha value is the ratio between the consumption, the BGX is the consumption, and the BG over T here is the like a target consumption or a budget. Okay, so the consumption budget ratio can appear in the uh, like competitive ratio. Okay, so this is a uh, result for the adversarial case, and we can also show like this is the best you can achieve for the general model. Here, um, back to like Billy's question, like if we do know there are some structure of this F and B, then there, there are chances that like you can get like a better than this alpha star competitive ratio. In particular, in Edwards problem. In Edwards problem, this F and B, they are proportional to each other. And there you can get like a one minus one over E competitive ratio, which is better than this alpha. This alpha is more like a data dependent uh, competitive ratio. Okay, so any questions for this? Okay. 
yeah, so as a byproduct, we can also show that like, even for the adversarial case, the stopping time of this algorithm is like T minus order square of T. So you never deplete your uh, resource too early. Okay, so this is like, you, even for the worst case, you, you, your, this algorithm can uh, spend the resource like over time. The next setting I'm gonna talk about is adversarial corruption. Uh, that means like most of the samples, they come from the IID model, but there are Delta instance that are corrupted by the adversary. In that case, what we can show is that the regret bound is square root of t plus order delta. Okay, so in particular, when delta equal to zero is the is the ID case is square root of t. If delta is like order t, then it's like it's gonna recover the adversarial case. And there you can only get like uh, order t regret. As long as like delta is like you crop like less than square root of t instance, you are totally fine. Another case is this Markov process case. So here, uh, what happens is like, if you think about like online pricing or like uh, SS allocation, so the stock market maybe follows like a Markov process. So here, what we show is that the regret for a Markov process, it's gonna, uh, gonna be like all their square root T log T. So you're gonna lose a, like a log T term. But like, it's just like, it's almost tied up to a log term because like stochastic ID is also a special case of the Markov process. And here, one thing I want to highlight is that like, so in this bound, like there is another term show up, uh, but I put it in the big O. So that term is the mixing time. So the mixing time of the, of the Markov process is gonna show up in the big O term. And the last uh, input model is the periodic model. So that means like, uh, ev so for every Q uh, sample, you're gonna, they're gonna come from the same distribution. So there's a periodic uh, input, like the period is Q. There, what we can show is the regret of the algorithm is order square, square root of QT. If Q is one, it's gonna recover the stochastic ID case, it's like square root T regret. If Q is T, then it's gonna recover the adversarial case. It's like order T regret. And another thing I want to highlight is that like, so we use the same algorithm for all of the five different uh, input model. I mean, it just means like the same algorithm can achieve like almost the best performance for different uh, like input models. That's why we call it like best of many words. So for periodic inputs, uh, to solve the LP beforehand. Mm -hmm. The period is small compared to T. Or? Uh, oh, you're saying it goes in your regret. Uh, it looks short. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Uh, if it's just time varying in a known way, so you, oh, don't, yeah. you don't do theory on that, but I guess you could, right? Yeah, so if it's like, okay, if the distribution maybe is shifting over time, but you know the distribution, how, how the distribution shifts. Yeah. That actually, I mean, there is a work by Jawi from MIU. They are able to handle that case. I mean, indeed, it's, it's very easy to change this algorithm. Just like, it's, so right now, the target consumption is B over T. It's uniform. So if you know the distribution, you can come up with like a better spending strategy. And for that, you have to so, solve the LP before. Right? Yeah, there you need to solve the LP once. Yeah. And then you are able to use that target consumption. Yeah. Uh, in the algorithm, you can still get a square of T regret. Yeah. Subgradient. Yeah. Yeah. over teach. Sorry. Yeah. For the adversary model, you got linear regret before, or you got square root regret? Yeah. So for the adversary model, it's like, it's uh, competitive ratio. Oh, it's yeah, so just competitive ratio. Yeah, just competitive. Oh, okay. it's like, yeah, you can, okay. that's the best you can hope. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this uh, periodic model are the periods uh, adversarial or uh, your functional distribution? Yeah, periodic from adversarial. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so with in this Q sample, it can be arbitrary, but like every Q sample can repeat the same. So, is 
It's that kind of stuff. It's a way to so what Nikki was mentioning. Consumption rate, there is a guarantee that you can consume at rate of say So you got that other question, okay? So yeah. Yeah. Um so I'm not sure, maybe let's take it off now. So I think like um I mean so I can tell you like how my proof work. Yeah, yeah I think yeah, it's very easy for you to understand for sure. Yeah, yeah. like yeah, that's very on the BJ so on the rate. So oh, okay. to alpha standard, maybe you seem to go in the opposite direction. Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. it's yeah. different. You also need to go up and down. Like, I mean, okay. because the spend is going to be more than this value, but smaller than this value. Like, it's over time, it's going to change. So, uh, in the adversary case, is it easy to see that the regret needs to be linear? Yes, yeah, easy to see that. Okay. Uh, I mean, essentially, early contact. Yeah, it's more like, so it's supposed to like, initially, the uh, reward is this here. And you do not know whether after a certain time, you don't know whether the reward is going to be clear or clear. Then the question is like whether you're going to collect uh, the action up from. I mean, for the other case, like, because you don't know future. So you can, at the most, like, right. yeah. yeah. So and either you like, exhaust the budget early, yeah. and then you're sorry later on, or yeah. you didn't exhaust the budget, but then you're yeah. sorry. Yeah. 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 That's the example there. <laughs> um, Regarding this alpha star, is it as possible that you can get? Like, yeah. On um, this case, is the best you can get. Like for so this general problem, you do not have any uh, structure on F and B. That's the best you can get. Right. So it's like you can have a lower bound. Yeah. Worst for every case alpha instance. star. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's a worst case instance. Like yeah, it's a one dimension instance. Like yeah, the best you can get. Okay. Like this bad. For any other user. Okay. Great. Okay, so yeah, here, yeah, uh, the next thing I'm going to talk about is like a few two extensions of this line of work. One is the PI controller, another one is regularizer. So, here I also want to mention that like, go back to like the case, like if you do not know this capital T, what can you do? But in practice, this T may be a random variable. You do not know it like beforehand. But you do know the like, historical data, you can maybe get an like, expectation of this T. Then you can set your target consumption to be like big over this expectation. And then what's going to happen is that like there's going to be an extra term showing up in the regret bound. Here is the extra term, like f bar times standard deviation of t. Okay, if the standard deviation is like not too large, then you still get the regret you want. Okay, that is how you deal with like an unknown t. Okay, so any other questions so far? And then I'm going to dive into like PI controller. Is this in one of your papers, the PI controller thing? Yeah, PI controller is also, yeah, it's in the, yeah, we have a paper for that uh, at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so here we have a paper. Is this, yeah, but like, I mean, uh, we have a version already, but like, we're going to update it like maybe in the next week. <laughs> yeah, but I'm going to, uh, this one is it's already ICAM. But like so many things will get updated. But you can read it anyway. The main thing is that the yeah, the main thing is the same. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Um, PI controller is actually very well used in practice. It's very simple. It's efficient and robust to like not linearity, etc. But there is no theoretical guarantee for a PI controller for this like at least like a participation problem as far as I know. So on the other hand, like this online algorithm. They are very extensively studied in theory, like Nikhil is doing that, like I'm doing that, like there are so many works. However, I mean, it's less used in practice. Um, and you see there is a gap between theory and practice. I mean, practice, people use control theory. In theory, we study like online algorithm. So the goal here is trying to bridge this gap. We are trying to see like whether we can, come, we can get like theoretical guarantee for PI controller. And furthermore, how we are able to design like a better PI controller with provable guarantee. This is what I, we are trying to do. Okay, so here is the PI controller when you apply to this due uh, like online allocation problem. Okay, so the first three steps are the same. 
you observe the request, you determine the action by using this like maximizing, uh, by solving this like maximize, uh, like weight adjust reward maximization problem, you update your resource. And then the difference is that like how you update the dual variable gonna be different. So previously the dual variable is updated by uh, mirror descent or online algorithm. Now we're gonna update it by PI controller. So how to um, do a PI controller for this like budget pacing problem? So in PI controller, you're gonna consider this error term. For us, the error term gonna become the gap between the true consumption and the expected consumption. Okay, this is the error term. So the key observation here is that like this error term is exactly the same as the subgradient for the dual uh, function. Because that can bridge PI controller to online optimization literature. And then here is the update for the PI controller. So I use like this like additive uh, form, like gradient descent form. You can also come up with like a multiplicative uh, update version. Here is the algorithm. So GT is the error term, okay? So KPGT is the proportional term. KP is a constant. And this is a P in the PI controller. So furthermore, you have this, this term here. This term here is like the sum over GT, sum of the error term. This is called the integral term in PI controller. And KI is a constant there. Okay, so you're gonna update your dual variable uh, by subtracting both the proportional term and the integral term. That's the PI controller. Okay, so is this is the algorithm clear here? Okay. Hmm? Is this what people would use in practice? Uh, yes, many, I would say like in many, many companies, people are using this PI controller. Right. Budget facing, yes. Yeah, but budget facing. Yeah. Including like solving for the optimal action this way. Yeah, I don't talk it on Google, but like, yeah, I would say like every, all the companies, almost all the companies using like this PI controller in some sense. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Why is why is it called here? Because this term is proportional term. This term is integral term. There's a P controller, integral controller. Where is the yeah. high of three from some? Yeah, it, it's a classic uh, control theory stuff. It's a control theory We take the temperature. Your target, yeah, that's exactly what he's doing. The is what you should spend. So the integral term is the sum of all the past gradients, but he's carefully not doing that because it's too obvious. If you add all the past gradients, you're going to keep on oscillating. So, this is not just connection to PA control, also guidance on like how PA controller should be done for budget pacing. If you directly do the name one of P and adding all the past gradients, you're doomed. Yeah. Saying they should not do the yeah. Yeah. There is also some difference, which is usually what PI controller or what is a sequential controller, meaning you're doing beauty plus many beauty plus something. Mm -hmm. Usually PI controllers are directly P plus I plus B is the thing you output mm -hmm. right? Or you're doing a PI controller, so to say, on the derivative. Right? There is that difference, but barring that, like if you look at this beauty plus one minus beauty, you should not do KP GT plus KI of hum of all the gradients. That is a problem. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we are able to work on the recover the collision of uh, I term, but I fear we, we are doing like exponential weights because like otherwise the algorithm won't cover it. It's gonna oscillate dramatically. But do you think that uh, like some some setting like yeah? So I think mean, okay. So numerically, we did observe that like this algorithm is more robust to the step size. I mean, you choose like best step size. I mean, if you choose the best step size, then the algorithm will have like very similar performance. But if you have, if you have like a worse step size, this algorithm is more robust. Yeah. So you can think, yeah, this term here is when KP is equal to KI, you can recover like the online mirror descent with momentum. Yeah, but this, when like KP is equal to KI, you can recover that. So we are kind of providing like a more general form for arbitrary PI, KI, KPI, KI, what are the performance there? Is this still a decent online learning algorithm? Uh, that is what we show. Like, I mean, it's, yeah, so 
from this perspective. I commented whether it, you know, whether it spoils things or not, but it doesn't spoil it. I see. So the result will be it doesn't spoil it. You are not able to prove theoretically that this does better, but it will do better in practice. Theoretically, for stochastic settings, like the constant factor better. So yeah. You can show that? Yes. Okay. But it's small coming, like, okay, so yeah. square root 2 or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we can do that. Yeah. 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 Uh, what are KP and KI? It's actually constant. Like, uh, like, like a step size? That is yeah. KP is exactly yeah. the step size. Yeah. In particular, yeah. if you forget about the momentum, that's all. That's the hyperparameter. Yeah. KP is the step size. Towards advantage of this. What's the advantage? Is there an advantage to doing this? Uh, it's more like historically people using it. And like we are trying to come up with a theory to justify that. Yeah. It's, that's it's like my answer. Yeah. And also, like, it's not like, I mean, it's hard for any company to change here. Like the algorithm, for example. Like, I mean, then you sound like you want something, some theory to justify that. <laughs> I mean, uh, could there be some robustness given that there's actually a separation and this does actually like better than by more than a square root two factor than the non-momentum version? Uh, we do not have it yet. So what we have is just like, I mean, before like there isn't any guarantee for this. Yeah. And now like in this work is more trying to get a one guarantee. So uh, I mean, we should again talk more offline with them. So what if, uh, what if there is a step change in the stochastic process, right? Or maybe there's a few of these, right? So would this just like catch the new thing faster as opposed to just adding everything so far? So MVC is like more robust. It's slower. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's probably slower, but it's more robust. If you have changes, like it's like robust. Yeah, if you have I mean, a, maybe you have to compare it not with the same KP, but with a smaller KP and then also some KI. So, so on one hand, you have your old algorithm with some KP, and now you take this one with a smaller KP and uh, some positive KI. Maybe this will do better. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's not like whether you don't want to have KI. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 But this is like KI practice or what training momentum is so important. This is what is lacking, but you don't know. It's Maybe kind it's of hard to make any results for saying, like, okay, momentum actually doesn't spoil it. In fact, like, it does great things. Yeah, and you might have to go beyond the IID. I think it's the better. It's a little bit yeah. the IID. Yeah. 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 yeah, that can be another thing to try and raise. Right? Yeah. But like, I mean, here it's slightly different. Like, it's more like momentum. Yeah, momentum, I think, it's very similar, right? Yes, like, it's, it's similar, but like. To use prediction based yeah. in the past yeah. to predict what the future gradients are going to be. Momentum is one way of doing that. Optimistic mirror descent would be the general view that some are supplying these traditions. No, optimistic mirror descent better. kind of will become at least the sequential version where I'm doing beauty plus one equal to beauty plus something. That's what I call the sequential version. It's more like the D term, I think. Because we can take it off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. There are so many algorithms you can play with. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, good. I mean, yeah, here is our scenario. One, okay. one more comment there. Okay. So, if you didn't have this uh, maximum zero, uh, already just a proportional term has the entire history, right? Just cumulative. True. Uh, that's why the sequential proportional is the rest of the world integral because the rest of the world will just be plus i plus b. So, okay, so, so then the two are same, right? With the, just with a different constant. No, no, that integral is integral of integrals. If you just remove the beta terms, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm like doubly adding it. That's, that's the problem. That's why you have to like do exponential dp. Yeah, the pi terms are like important part. E important sequence. Yeah, without the pi terms, then we cover the Gouin set. That's yeah, pi terms sub like a moment. Of the sort of view, right? In this yeah. language, p controller is enough. That, yeah, that's one thing. Yeah. yeah. So that integral is basically by putting the geometry dk or just adding a finite window of things, yes. right? The one by beta is roughly all you're adding. Yes. So it's, it's still a p with some history. Yeah, basically some, a thing, lift it some kind of dk you have to do. It's not really the exponent is necessary, but if you don't dk at all, it's a problem. Basically, surely yeah. it oscillate you won't get. That's not good. Whether exponential is necessary or not, it's not clear really that some other dk is okay. Yeah. So if you don't dk, it's not good. Yeah, it's not dk. 
Can you also rewrite the legal term in terms of moti and moti? Minus one? Uh, yeah, that's just how much we can rewrite it by using momentum. That term is the term is a momentum. Right. Yeah, so, yeah, we can, yeah, we can, we can rewrite it. Okay, so if ki is equal to kp, then you can rewrite it like that. Yeah, if they are equal to that, you can do that. But like if we can, if they are the same, if the ki is equal to kp, this term here can be rewritten as like, the momentum from the previous iteration. Okay, great. So, like, I mean, this is a theoretical guarantee. You can get the same, like, uh, regret bound, so of T. So, here, one thing I want to mention is that, like, if you choose the proper step size, proper parameter, and under some, like, assumptions, we can show that. This is regret bound is like super t better than the other mirror descent algorithm. It's like constant, but still like slightly better. And but numerically, what we didn't realize is like it's more robust to the step size. If you have like a like a not so good step size, this algorithm is gonna perform better. Okay, that's true for like just online learning. It must be true for right? Yeah, 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 it's, it's, yeah, it's, I mean, you know, experiments we use like a random sizing for experiments, but like, yeah, I think like it's, uh, it's a case for Pharma algorithm. So, like, any moment, um, sort of like trying to balance, uh, make it, make it like sort of like more yeah, fast. Yeah, while mentioning this, why you were just proving things about it for online like, learning because there is this equivalence. So, this problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, yeah. So that is like what we, we did, like we prove it for how I learned and then map it to other Okay, great. I think that I'm almost at the time. So, uh, okay, I'm going to skip this part. Uh, and this part is like, uh, in some sense, like similar to what you feel mentioned, like it's like you have a like non separable regularizer or term. And, I mean, it's kind of incorporate like maybe like fairness, load balancing, etc. And I mean, I would say like the algorithm is also very similar to the chaos algorithm. It's maybe like it's like one dimension smaller, and it's gonna have like the only difference is like the target consumption here. This is at is no longer a constant b over t, but rather it's changing over time. And that's also depends on uh, the regularizer. And in the theoretical guarantee, we can get square of t regret for the statistic case, which is similar to in Kiel's case. We can also get like adversarial results, and we can get a competitive ratio for this problem. But this competitive ratio going to depend on the regularizer R. Okay. So that's all I want to talk about. Okay. So thank you for your attention. Whether you do FBN to analyze the PI controller? Uh, yeah, so you mean uh, what do you mean the PI controller? What's the technique? Oh, the technique. Ah, uh, the technique. Okay, so we're kind of like trying to map it to like online mirror descent with a moment. Okay. But indeed, like as a byproduct, we also give the first regret bound for online mirror descent with a moment. Okay. And there, like we utilize like online optimization, like how to, how to deal with the momentum, et cetera. Okay. Use all this, like, yeah. Let's draw this idea to deal with this issue. Yeah. Okay. Stability in the right rates is one of the problems. We can talk. Yeah, we can talk about it offline. Yeah, so it's like, yeah. It's, yeah, it's trying to make it like a, a momentum term and then deal with it. GI control is just a little more gentle than OFT. It's different. Like it's too gentle. It's based on like Yeah, more general sounds. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it means a newer version. <laughs> I mean, we haven't like published it yet. Yeah, no, but already there is some proof. Yeah, there is some proof. Yeah. Yeah. Complete general of the AI Uh, Max, uh, operation something that makes the analysis harder. Uh, the max operation. The, uh, mu has to be positive, so you have essentially a projection onto your. Yeah, yeah. Is that, does that make the analysis harder somehow? Uh, for the PI controller? Or? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, okay. So that makes the problem harder. Okay, so, okay. Um, 
in these results, it doesn't make it harder. It makes it harder for the square of t improvements. I mean, because we need like more assumptions to get like square of t two improvements. But for this, for the generic case, it doesn't. It's square of t. Uh, regret that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just to get some context on like comparing this talk and the previous talk. So it's more like, okay, so I would say, so this two work, like these follow the same spirit. And they are due lessons for like unallocation problem. It's more like probably like they are like extension of the previous work. And then like, um, but like, I didn't see any like, like absolute like uh, disadvantage of the algorithm, except like, okay, one, one thing, yeah. One thing is that like, so in our analysis, the, 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 depend, the de dependence on the dimension of the resource, we have like, with the Manila algorithm, we have like square root T, the square root of M, M is the dimension of the resource, we have square root of M in the regret bound. And then in their algorithm, they have like log M, yeah, I think mean, like a better. Uh, yeah, if you yeah, if you know like OPT or something like that, we can also get like a lot of not OPT even the F bar. Yeah, even yeah, F bar. Anything, yeah, we can have like any estimation of like OPT gonna give you like um uh, like a lot of M. I mean we can also do that, but like that's like in the vanilla version, we can not do that. Yeah. So I should think of this as like strictly general. In the non-separable case. Yeah, yeah, non-separable case. Yeah. Okay. For the separable case, like mm, this is separable case. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The the regular answer is the non-separable case. Yeah. So theory. Yeah. 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 Yeah, there are definitely a lot of the similarities, but like, yeah, just try to figure out what are the difference. Yeah. Is there some non separable constraint that you can use to compare the similarities? Yeah. Slightly, like, I think, like, yeah, this. So I'm similar to the Spencer do and this is the grand of yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, still the grand of the one. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, that's yeah. fine, that's true. Yeah. I, I think you see it in the analysis. So, it's, yeah. So, like, if you assume something. differentiable, you don't need to do it. They always like require to like resolving the problem multiple times over the time. That's fine. And right. let's say we don't care about how cost that much. Yeah. <coughs> Where's the question? But if there's an algorithm that gets best of both words for log t and log Yeah, I mean, my answer is I don't know where really know. I mean, yeah, so it's like kind of like there are so many works. Okay. Oh, and, and just do a 